Hello, welcome to Anatomy Lab. This video is about the gross anatomy of the body cavities, otherwise known as the coelom, and the membranes, the serous membranes that cover their walls, as well as the, the derivative structures of uh, those serous membranes, like the mesenteries. Right, so the embryonic coelom in mammals has been split into several body cavities. So it's not just a single body cavity, but it's split. Right? And one of those cavities are, is the cavity of the heart. This is the heart, in the chest. The cavity of the heart is the pericardial cavity. And another set of silumi cavities are the left and the right pleural cavities. And then the largest compartment of the coelom would be this abdominal or peritoneal cavity containing much of the visceral organs. Now in general, the silumi cavities have serous membranes that cover their walls. There's an internal covering and then there's a, an outer wall covering. And these membranes secrete a watery fluid that helps uh, lubricate the visceral organs so that they won't rub roughly against each other to reduce friction, right? And so in general, your outer wall, they have a prefix. They are prefixed by the word parietal. And then the inner wall that are usually fused to the organ itself is prefixed by the word visceral. So for example, the cavity of the heart, pericardial cavity, has an outer wall called the parietal pericardium. And then the inner wall that is fused to the heart tissue itself is called the visceral pericardium. And in between them would be the space kusana ka suspend yung heart, the pericardial cavity. In this case, it's difficult to, to dissect. Let me try to show you the cavity of the heart. So you see this, I've made an incision through the pericardial cavity. There's a space inside before you reach the wall of the heart. So that space is the pericardial cavity. And this one contains the pericardial, the parietal pericardium, I mean. The visceral pericardium would be, as I said, fused to the heart wall. Visceral pericardium. Likewise, the pleural cavities are lined with pleura and then the outer one covering the rib cage would be the parietal pleura and then the visceral pleura is fused to the visceral organs covering the lungs for example visceral pleura the parietal pleura even covers the diaphragm, the anterior surface of the diaphragm. So this is the diaphragm, the muscular dome here. So the anterior surface of this dome is covered by the parietal pleura. Right. And I forgot to mention that the diaphragm is like the partition that separates the pleural cavities from the abdominal cavity the diaphragm. Only mammals have them and some other weird uh, reptiles, but in general mammals only has the, the diaphragm, the muscular diaphragm. Whereas the abdominal cavities are covered by peritoneum, the outer peritoneal layer surrounding the body wall, the abdominal body wall. It's called the parietal peritoneum. And then the visceral peritoneum would be 
adhered to the visceral organs, also called as the serosa. So for example, the stomach has a serosal layer. Okay? And so the diaphragm, the posterior surface of the diaphragm, here, the, the side facing the abdominal cavity, you can imagine that it would be covered by the abdominal, the, sorry, the parietal peritoneum. Okay. So like the, the thoracic surface aspect of it would be covered by the parietal pleura, but the posterior side would be covered by the parietal peritoneum. Right, so let's look at the pleural cavities more closely because it's quite complicated, yung kanyang uh, anatomy. So there's a left and a right pleural cavity, right? And each one of the lateral pleural cavities would have their own parietal pleura surrounding the outer one. And when the left and the right parietal pleurae meet together in the middle, they create a septum that you can see here emanating from the heart to the ventral body wall. So that septum is like the meeting point of the left and right parietal pleurae, if you can imagine. That septum has a name, as you would guess. That's the mediastinal septum. Now, what's interesting is that this septum, which now cre uh, creates the partition between the left and right pleural cavities, has like ensnared within them, between them, a bunch of organs, including the heart and its pericardial cavity. As you can see, the heart is enclosed by these mediastinal septum other organs enclosed by the meeting of the left and right parietal pleura and therefore are said to be or can be said to be inside the mediastinum are the following this brownish organ here ventral to the heart is the thymus gland located within the mediastinum what else are located inside the mediastinum look here See that uh, tube there with characteristic white stripes, or rings of rings of white cartilage. That's the trachea, the windpipe. And when it penetrates the chest cavity, it's also ensnared and located within the mediastinum. Other structures located within the mediastinum are these two, sorry, blocking the wing. So, so this one is the dorsal aorta or thoracic aorta, and it's also located within the mediastinum. Ventral to it is this tube, the esophagus, also located within the mediastinum. I even ripped open some of the mediastinal septum tissue, so, so I have a better view of them. So the space inside is actually the mediastinum and located within them are the esophagus dorsal aorta and the other structures that I just enumerated. What else? Aside from the dorsal aorta, there are also blood vessels contained within the mediastinum, the great veins. For example, this vein here is the precaval vein, also inside the mediastinum. What else? There's a post caval vein. So that vein there is the post caval vein, also inside the mediastinum. But in this case, it's located within a specific portion of the mediastinum. This one is the caval fold, also containing the medial lobule of the posterior lobe of the right lung, if you can remember. Right, so this is the caval fold 
which is just like a, a special portion, special portion of the, the mediastinal septum. Right, so that's it for the mediastinal septum and the mediastinum containing a bunch of visceral organs in the middle of the chest cavity. Let's move posteriorly to the abdominal cavity. As I said, there's a parietal and visceral peritoneum. And the two meet in the middle and create these mesenteries, suspending the visceral organs. Right? And that's uh, one of the major functions of mesenteries is for them to hold the visceral organs in place so that they won't get disarranged now and then. But it lends a certain degree of uh, movement or mobility to the, to the dig digestive organs. During embryonic development, there are, the visceral organs are suspended from both the dorsal and ventral body wall by dorsal and ventral mesenteries. But in general, as the embryo matures into an adult animal, the ventral mesenteries degenerate, except in specific portions. But the dorsal mesenteries more or less remain intact. And the dorsal mesenteries have uh, special names depending on which organ they are connected to and they're suspending. For example, this is the stomach and the, its dorsal mesentery is called the mesogaster. The mesogaster has a, a very expansive portion that you first saw when you opened the abdominal cavity. That fatty apron that covered most of the intestines is a special portion of the mesogaster called the greater omentum, which we now remove to better see the digestive organs. But that's the meso, that's the greater omentum. Here are some remnants of the greater omentum. Right. And then there's a dorsal mesentery suspending the duodenum. Remember, the, next to the stomach is this segment of the small intestine called the duodenum. And if you look dorsal to it, that mesentery also containing the pancreas is called the mesoduodenum. So in general, the dorsal mesentery start with meso and then the structure that they, they suspend. And then the rest of the intestine has a mesentery called the, just the mesentery or mesentery proper. No special name. And look at those, look at those blood vessels permeating the mesenteries. That's another job of the, of the mesenteries, you know. They are highly vascularized. They support the blood vessels that carry all of the substances that are absorbed in the digestive tract. That's why you see all those veins inside the mesentery proper. And then from, from those blood vessels, the, the nutrients will be uh, diverted into the, this amazing organ called the liver for metabolic processing. What about the large intestine? This is the colon. And it has, you can see, it also has a dorsal mesentery called the mesocolon. Okay, th that's it for the dorsal mesenteries. As I said that the ventral mesenteries most of them degenerated already, except in specific portions. One example of a ven persistent ventral mesentery is the, is the one that suspends the liver substance to the ventral body wall. This one is the falciform ligament. Falciform ligament. The falciform ligament is actually continuous to another mesentery that suspends the liver to the diaphragm. So that portion is the coronary ligament. But this one, close to the ventral body wall, is the falciform ligament, a ventral mesentery. Another persistent ventral mesentery is located here. It's a lesser curvature in a stomach. And it's called the lesser omentum. 
the lesser momentum. It has specific portions, the, the portion of the lesser momentum going from the stomach to the liver is called the gastrohepatic ligament. And then the portion of the lesser momentum going from the liver to the duodenum is called the hepatoduodenal ligament. That's why the alternative name for lesser momentum is the gastrohepatoduodenal ligament. And that's another ventral mesentery persisting in the adult. That lesser momentum is actually what suspends these delicate structures here that you dissected, the common bile duct, for example. And also holding in place this huge vein here that collects all of the blood from the digestive system. This is the hepatic portal vein to be dissected next in our circulatory system unit. There's another ventral mesentery here. Remember, there's a ligament suspending the urinary bladder to the ventral body wall. It's a median umbilical ligament, another persistent ventral mesentery. What else? Uh, here's the last one. The mesentery linking the spleen to the stomach is called the gastrosplenic ligament. So, medyo intuitive naman yung mga names nila. Right? Gastrosplenic ligament. And that's everything you have to know for the salumic cavities and its derivatives, the serous membrane.